I, I've also had the similar experience. I traveled in India in uh, my first time in 1987, and I was shocked by the iniquity, the, the, the immense chasm between the poor and the rich. Um, I saw a poor boy on the street begging next to a body to try to earn enough money from begging to be able to burn his grandfather's body. And he was begging near a five-star hotel where very rich citizens were going by with police guards who had batons and who were beating the beggars as they went by. And this is uh, the kind of uh, scene that one can't forget no matter how long one lives. Um, can I ask you if you're optimistic that a crisis like the one that we're going through now will have a positive effect? That people, not just in countries like Italy, which have been very, very hard hit and have had a personal direct experience, but in other countries which, which actually thrive on, on the iniquity between the rich and the poor, in certain parts of America, uh, where I've visited and seen this in the most extreme cases as well, will this have a positive impact on them? Thank you for this question. I'm a, a, a optimist and a realist at the same time. But I bet my energy, and uh, we are so many, that uh, want uh, to make a change uh, for the better, that actually, I didn't know you before, but uh, you are invited, uh, and if you come uh, as a media person, is you're two times invited, uh, because uh, you would uh, see right now, we're working all over the world uh, to create uh, leaders uh, for the 21st century. You know, people-centered leaders. And so, for example, you are invited, uh, it's a really an official invitation, at the Thank United Nations, Grand Pelé, in Geneva, Switzerland, the 26th of October, if the coronavirus pandemia would allow us by that date, you know, where we're going to launch uh, all over the world uh, this uh, program uh, to promote uh, the emerging uh, of natural leaders. Now, think uh, just uh, about the media, and it's true also for businesses, it's true for non-profit organizations, it's true for politicians. If uh, we all did, uh, we are all stakeholders uh, for this uh, future of the planet, did a little bit, but just think, we could, uh, with the help of the media, stream the proceeding or anybody interested and instead of having one of the thousand conference that every year are you know consume and we preach to the choir so we speak with the people that are already convinced of the same topic and we are allowing people to really see how it is but not only uh, able to listen also to speak, and now there is a technology, and we are not uh, just doing a one shot, uh, but we creating a, a network uh, where people on a platform uh, can uh, give uh, their suggestion, the news uh, from uh, their standpoint. Think about uh, having uh, the media, I, I'm most, uh, having uh, reporters I'm most, uh, all over the world, not just a professional reporter, but reporting it from their village. Uh, from their home, from their family, from their community. We can do better. I'm, I'm most but pleased to accept it. your invitation. Uh, I accept your invitation immediately. I would be very Good. happy to attend the event because I think that uh, it's, it's not just the field of uh, psychology, but in fact, even the media itself has to change the character of its operations. You know, I've... Uh, I've worked in state media, I've reported for CNN, I've reported for Japanese national television and Canadian TV and so on. And I can tell you that uh, the quality of journalism that we were able to do when we were working for a machine 
in which they wrote the questions and a discussion like you and I are having right now was impossible, was killing journalism. And it's this yeah. alternative journalism that is allowing us to get to the essence of what needs to be done. And the more we see this, the more we see the importance of the, the electronic revolution that we can actually communicate with people who in lifetimes we would have never met. So I'm, I'm very happy to accept your invitation. I'll be very pleased to attend your event in, uh, in October. I'd, I'd like to move Fantastic. forward to yeah. a little bit of... Thank you very much. I'd like, to, uh, I'd like to move forward to get your assessment with respect to this particular crisis and, uh, and a little bit of a, an assessment from your personal point of view about the role that uh, China has played in Italy. Uh, there was a great deal of anti-China propaganda about the virus, calling it the Wuhan virus and so on. And now I think we've moved beyond that and there's a realization that we're all in this boat together. Do you see uh, a positive element in China's assistance to Italy during this crisis? And if China's assistance has been of benefit to Italy, is there a way to reduce this from the state to state level down to a person to person level and to personalize the interaction between Chinese and Italian people, for example. Oh, thank you. Another question I'd like very much uh, because I have a uh, personal experience. I am uh, I live in Florence and in Rome because my headquarters uh, are in Rome and in Rome uh, a bar where I do, as Italian often do, you know, take uh, the cappuccino and the croissant, has been uh, uh, in uh, the last couple of years uh, bought by Chinese people. Well, during uh, the beginning of the coronavirus, it uh, uh, was a minority, but uh, some uh, stupid, uh, very stupid uh, Italian, uh, you know, uh, offended in the street uh, people just because they were Chinese, uh, like uh, they were responsible for this pandemic. Crazy. And uh, I noticed, and they were commenting to me, that much less uh, people would go in their bar, uh, you know, to take uh, cappuccino, etc., with their paranoia, thinking that uh, <laughs> they will catch uh, the virus, uh, totally crazy. And so, me and other people, just to show our support and not just in words, uh, we make effort uh, to go that with that bar. And so, at the end, uh, to show solidarity, <laughs> very, there I, were I more to clients uh, to that Chinese uh, bar. You know what I mean? At the same time, I, have to tell you that I think a Chinese. There's a Chinese restaurant near my home, just one block from my home. And the exact same thing happened here. <laughs> I used to go to that Chinese restaurant. I liked the food. I lived in Asia for 20 years and I liked the food. But when this uh, virus started getting blamed on the people of China, mm -hmm. I make it a habit. I've been making it a habit of bringing my whole family and bringing my friends and insisting that if we're going to eat together, we will only do that at the Chinese restaurant. And uh, now we've developed a very good friendship on a personal level with the Chinese operators of this restaurant in our community. So I, I, I appreciate hearing your experience because it's so similar to ours. Yes. And uh, if uh, we can translate this, uh, at the level of uh, international relationship. Uh, we need uh, to understand uh, that this coronavirus challenge uh, and all the rest, uh, we either win uh, together or lose it together. This is not gonna, so it's just as smart from China or any other country Europe uh, is uh, in the brink of taking a very uh, intelligent or very stupid, uh, uh, you know, uh, decision. If we do not understand that, that we are all in the same planet uh, and that uh, 
for example, the polluted air that we breathe uh, in some place uh, is often produced uh, in another country. If we understand uh, that uh, we have uh, only one planet and we have to collaborate uh, to the governance uh, of the whole planet, uh, and the more we are egoistically and building walls, uh, the more we hurt uh, not only other people in other country, but in the end there's a boomerang effect. So we need a good politician that I also see that the only win way is a win-win way. You know, the lesson of First World War, the lesson of Second World War, and all the other war, even the one wage uh, right now, oops, uh, are the epitome, not of uh, aggression, but of stupidity. Now, when you yes, talk uh, about the personalized approach, how can we possibly make a multiplex of personalized communications? Is technology at the stage in which, first of all, millions of people can have personal relationships with strangers? And secondly, how can we divine and search through these multiple communications to find the ones that are of the most value to share them the most broadly? Yes, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, technology by itself uh, is uh, neutral and can be used uh, like any tools uh, for, you know, positive uh, pr uh, purpose uh, to bring uh, health, uh, well-being, uh, welfare, prosperity to all or the opposite, uh, have a, a Big Brother or Orwellian uh, scenario uh, built up on technology for more control, less democracy, and all that. But anyhow, our life and death uh, choice uh, is uh, either we build a sustainable relationship that are at the individual, family, community, national and international level, or we pay a dear price, uh, and the scientists, uh, you know, explain it to us so many times. We just don't listen sometimes, uh, we are too afraid, uh, so we negate the problem. That's a form of defense. So do the politician uh, that want uh, to be reelected in the next four years, and so often they don't really uh, take at heart the long-term uh, project uh, and issue. But uh, if we realize uh, that uh, we're going to the brink, uh, like sometime, uh, and you mentioned uh, your personal experience, uh, that uh, we are not in control, the life is fragile, that you have to take uh, good care of yourself and your loved one, uh, well, then, uh, you know, this uh, trauma would serve uh, to change uh, and see the enormous potentiality, not utopia, but we already have the tools uh, and the uh, scientific uh, solid the proof that it works. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Tuconi. I think that uh, already I can see from my perspective, having just met you, uh, you know, remotely in this way, that uh, this has a real opportunity for something positive to come for all of us. Thank you very much for coming on our program and speaking with us. Thank you to you and all the best.